Okay, let's try this. Um, I'm going to try to show what kind of information, some of the kind of information that you can obtain uh, from a true digital storage sampling oscilloscope. This uh, is a LaCroix 9370M 1 gigahertz digital sampling storage oscilloscope. And what I've got displayed here is a little bit of its uh, display and math ability. And um, the signal that we're looking for is coming just from the 555 timer portion of the Ainsley circuit as illustrated in the famed quantum article. Okay, Now we'll go back to the oscilloscope screen here and I'll try to show and explain a little bit of what's going on. Okay. The basic scope parameters are here, channel 1 and channel A. Channel 1 is this trace across the top here. And that is the signal coming directly from the uh, through the, through the uh, 10x attenuating probe from the Ainsley uh, 555 timer. Trace 2 is the time integral of that top trace. And it, if you can see, you'll see that the integral goes up and then there's a little flat spot that corresponds with those peaks. Up little flat spot, up little flat spot, up little flat spot. That's because the integral or the power, I'm sorry, the energy in the signal, if this were an instantaneous power trace, which it isn't, it's just a voltage trace, but if I used the other channel of the oscilloscope to multiply voltage and current and then displayed that on a single trace, the multiplication of those two, then the integral would represent the energy in that instantaneous power trace at any given time along the run. Okay. Now down here in the parameters I have the duty cycle of trace 1 displayed right there. You can see it's 96.59% right now. The frequency of trace 1, 2.350 kilohertz, almost 2400. It's hard to set that 555 timer precisely. And then here are the minimums and maximums of that peak. So the minimum is down here at the bottom. This little one indicates the zero baseline. And the maximum is 9.3 volts or so up here at the top. Because after all, this timer is producing mostly on duty cycle. Okay. So... Oh, and these lines over here are cursors, which define the area over which the maximum and minimum and this final area down here. This, this uh, bottom line, the area, is in microvolts per second squared here, because it's the integral of this trace. And that area number gives you the area underneath this curve here. So once again, uh, that area underneath this curve is actually a doubly integrated area under that curve. Okay. A little confusing. All right. So now what I'm going to do is show you how when I vary the duty cycle of the Ainsley circuit how the oscilloscope catches that. Here we're going to... A, uh, that's the farthest that I can turn that pot. This is all the way in one direction. It was a duty cycle of 98.6 and this is all the way in the other direction 76.73. That's the full range that this circuit will produce. As far as the frequency goes that's the slowest frequency, and since we're off the scale there, off the charts, we only have one cycle, how can it tell a frequency? So I'm going to change the time base until we have several 
spikes in there. And there's your bottom end frequency of about 270 hertz, something below 300 hertz. And then once again we'll go back up, all the way up. That's the top of that setting and turn the duty cycle back up and there's the maximum frequency and duty cycle that this circuit will produce. Let's change the time base back to where we were. There we go. <clears throat> now notice what happens to the integral that is the bottom trace there, A, as the duty cycle widens. Since the circuit is off in this period of time, the energy does not accumulate. It only accumulates when the circuit is on. Off, on, off. Right? Okay. That's it. Thanks for watching.